B'Shem Hashem Na'asev Nasliach. Welcome everybody to our Zerah Shimshon Shi'ur, our weekly on the Parsha. Weekly Zerah Shimshon Shi'ur on the Parsha. Let me rephrase myself. Uh, today we are doing Parashat Tetzaveh Be'ezrat Hashem. Um, Ma'amar Dalet, the fourth Ma'amar of the Zerah Shimshon. We'll do a little bit of the Zerah Shimshon and then we're going to go into other things a little bit also just to explain what the Zerah Shimshon is kind of talking about. There is more to it. Actually, the subject that the Zerah Shimshon tonight will be talking about is one of my favorite, favorite subjects, one of my favorite subjects in Shemot, and you'll see why. So it says, um, oh, before we go further, may the Zechut of the Zerah Shimshon be a Malitz Yosher for all of us. Those, are the, those that are single, Bezrat Hashem, should be Zochet to finding their um, Zivug, Bezrat Hashem, Bizmano, Bekarov. And it should be for the Rafa Shalema of Kol, Chole Am Israel, especially those that are um, um, injured um, in the, in the uh, recent tragedy. May Hashem give him a Rafa Shalema, Rafa Tanifesh, Rafa Guf. And Leilu Nishmat, my father, Rafa El Ben Munavar, Manuel Ben Munavar, and Yafabat Bibi John. Okay, so it says in the Gemara of Batra, Perek Hay. In Amud He, uh, uh, sorry, in Ain He Amud Aleph. It says over there, it brings the Pasuk from Yeshayahu. It says, Vesamti Kadkod Shimshotaich. Now, over there, it explains it. Basically, the Pasuk says, I, you sh- I will make Kadkod your Shimshotaich. And over there, the Gemara explains what Kadkod is and what Shimshotaich means. What does that mean? And it explains, it says, I will build your walls of Yerushalayim from the stones that are called Kadkod. Now, just, just to get you know, some intros over here. We're talking about the walls of the third Jerusalem. We're talking about the, the, the world to come, not the world to come, basically, you know, earth after Moshiach, the world after Moshiach. Right? The Olam Haba, that we'll see Bezrat Hashem in our times speedily, Amen. So at that time, Yeshayahu is giving prophecy and saying that Hashem is saying, I will build your wall of Jerusalem out of Kadkod. Now what's Kadkod? We don't know what Kadkod is. We've never heard of such a thing. We don't know if it's a stone, if it's metal, if it's steel. Right? So this is actually a discussion either between that in itself is a discussion whether who the discussion is between. It's a discussion, metaphorically, either between the Malachim, the angels, Gabriel and Michael. This is a discussion between the two, what Katkod is, or <clears throat> the Amoraim of the Gemara, <clears throat> Yehuda and Chizkiah, the sons of Rabbi Chia. It's either a discussion between two angels or a discussion between two personalities in the Gemara. Let's put it that way. Okay? And one of them says, one of them says, Kadkod is the name of a stone called Shoham in the Torah. Because we say Avne Shoham. Right? One of them says, the stone that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to build the walls of Jerusalem is a stone of Shoham. Now, what is Shoham? Which is the Shoham stone is one of the 12 stones that were on the breastplate of the Kohen Gadol. The Kohen Gadol had 12 stones on his, uh, on his breastplate. And each one represented one of the Shevatim. Now the stone of Shoham represented Yosef HaTzadik. The Shoham stone was Yosef's stone on the breastplate of the Kohen Gadol. On Aaron HaKohen's breastplate. And the other one says, V'chad Amar, that Katkod is what? Yash, the stone called Yashefeh. Yashefeh was the stone of Binyamin, the next stone on the breastplate. So one says, you know, Hashem is saying, Katkod, I will build your walls of Jerusalem out of Katkod. One of them says, it's the Shoham stone, which is the stone of Yosef HaTzadik. The other one argues and says, no, it's actually the Yashefeh, which is the stone of Binyamin. And it continues, it says, So God, so to speak, says, 
Leheve keden ukten. It shall be like both of you. Not just like you say, not just like you say, but like both of you, right? Meaning, I'm going to use the stones of Shoham, and I'm going to use the stones of Yashafeh. Therefore, the, the, the stones of the wall are called Kadkod. It's kind of like a way of saying, little here, a little there. Kad here and a kad there, kadkod, meaning we're taking the opinion of one side and the opinion of the other side. The stones of the walls of Jerusalem are going to be built by the Shoham and the Yashafim. Now he says, V'tzarichiyu, now we have to understand. Lama davka yehiyu achomot? Why should the walls of Jerusalem explicitly be from these two stones, Shoham and Yashafim? What specialty do these stones have that Hashem is saying, I will build your wall of Jerusalem out of these two stones? Why not any other stone? Why not the Jerusalem stone? Like we have now, it's a very special stone. Everybody likes to use it. Baruch Hashem, from the mountains of Yerushalayim, there's homes here. In California, there are homes in Texas. There are homes in New York that are built with the stone, the Jerusalem stone. They import it from there. There are synagogues that have it. You've seen them, right? The white the white stones, there are synagogues that have them inside, you know, they've, they've decorated different things with the stone, it's a, it's a, it truly is a very nice stone, right, it's a nice stone, you get a feeling of Yerushalayim, you truly, because Yerushalayim, you go, all the apartments are built with this stone, everything, everything you look around, it's this stone, so why not any of these stones, why precious stones like the Yashafeh and the Shoham? Now, what was One second. So, what was the Shoham and the Yashafeh? What is the stone today? The Shoham is the onyx stone. Any jewelers here? Are you? Are you no. Okay, it's the onyx stone, onyx, and the Yashafeh is jasper. From the word Yashpeh as it goes through different cultures and stuff, Yashpe, Yashper, Jasper. The Jasper stone is the Yashafeh stone, right? And, uh, and the Shoham stone is the onyx. Now, the color of the onyx is usually either orangish reddish, or it even comes yellow with black lines in it, blackish, yellowish lines in it, or in Persian, they used, they, they used to, you know what onyx is in Persian? How do I know and you don't know? That's what you're using. I'll tell you why. Because I'm an Esfahani, and I come from a long line of Esfahanis that were in antiques. So the, the onyx stone is Aqiq in Persian. They call it the Aqiq stone. You know, remember those necklaces, Aqiq necklace that you would... Probably like your father's grandfather's grandparents would have in their weddings and stuff. It was something that was given to the bride. Now, the specialty of these stones, you have to understand, the main specialty of these stones could be, could be, um, could be, could, if you want to have the strength of the stone, it has to be a pure stone and it has to be uncut, untouched. Meaning once it's shaped into something or whatever it is, then it uses a lot of its strength. It has its maximum power when it's untouched and it's just a clear, clean stone. And obviously it has to be the real thing. There's a lot of things out there, they call them onyx today, but they're not really, you know, like, eh. you know, you got to have that old stuff. And these stones really have powers and you will see. That's why I have two farm here. Maybe if we have time, we'll go into some of them. And, 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 and uh, Jasper stone comes in many different colors. It comes in green, black, it has many, many different colors that the Jasper stone comes in. Um, the Jasper stone in Persian, I had to research this because I didn't know this one. It's, it's just Jasper. That's what it's called in Persian. Actually, they have a color called Siyah uh, Jasper. Uh, it's like Jasper black because it's a very dark black. The black jasper stone is a very dark, deep, dark black, so they have a name for that stone. They have a name for the color jasper, you know, um, uh, uh, black. Like we have like purple, velvet purple, whatever. 
All right, stop looking at me. All right, ve'yesh <laughs> lomar. So, now we want to understand why are these two stones so special that Hashem is saying your wall, the third Jerusalem wall, will be built with this stone. Now, he's going he's gonna to go into explaining, giving a little introduction about the stones as to what they really are. Ve'yesh lomar. And I'm going to read you the pasuk from the parasha. It says, Israel. These stones should be put according to the names of Bnei Israel, meaning the names of the Shevatim, the twelve tribes. Shetem Isra, twelve. Al Shemotam, Pituchechotam, Ish Al Shemot Yena Lishlem Asar Shevet. So each Shevet would have their name, and in, in, carved in these stones were the names of the Shevatim. Actually, the names of Abraham, Tzachach, and Yaakov Avinu is also in the stones at the beginning. Uh, you, you have to, I don't have a picture. I, you would have to see how they're divided into 12 stones, right? These, these are the stones that were in the Avne Achoshen. And, and these two stones, the Shoham and Yashafeh, were on this breastplate, were the names of the Shemot HaShavatim Yosef Ubin Yamin. The Yashafe and the Shoham was the stones of Yosef and Binyamin. Now, the Katu Beset Besefer Shilte Giborim. It is written in the book called Shilte Giborim. She'even HaShoham Yoil, the stone Shoham, as we said, the, uh, the, the, um, the onyx, I'm mixing up which one was which. The Shoham, which is the onyx stone, the red one, what is it used for? What specialties, what powers does this stone have? <clears throat> Many, actually, it says. It helps to strengthen a person's memory. You want to remember a lot of things. If you have a true onyx stone, uncut, you hang it around your neck or you keep it with you, you'll remember anything you want to remember. It helps really retain memory. Why? How do you say why in Mexican, Spanish? Por qué? You gotta say it with feeling, right? Why? Why is it that this stone has this power? Oh, and next. And also it has the power to give back a person's sight. The Shilta Giborim actually says, a person that has this stone, it is possible for him to be able to see from one place Way, way far away, it's like you're wearing uh, binoculars. You could see very, very well. Again, if you find the true stone, which today, I don't know how many of these things are really like the pure, pure, pure. Because they can, uh, scientists can actually uh, manipulate and make these stones, some stones, some things they can manipulate. So those are not the natural. The natural ones are the ones that are actually built in into nature on their own. And everyone's going to love this one. It also has the power to make you bling bling, rich. It gives a person osher, ashir. It makes a person rich. Please stay till the end of the shiur. No one leave. Everyone's going to go for a search. Everyone's going to be typing in eBay, onyx stone. <laughs> <laughs> It also makes a person be able to speak languages, to be able to understand many different chokhmot, many different wisdoms. A person will be able to understand. And the hidden secrets of the world, the person will be able to understand that most people cannot even grasp. A person that truly has and is able to really grasp the powers of the stone, can do that. Vechimat, and it also, almost, Yavi et Adam lide nevu'ah, can also almost bring a person to almost receiving prophecy. Just one stone. Who wouldn't want to have the stone? Right? All why? Because this stone was given to Yosef HaTzadik. This was the stone of Yosef HaTzadik. Because Mipnei Yosef had all of these strings in him. 
because it says that Yosef was yafei naim, he had beautiful eyes, he had good eyes. And Chachamim also say that Yosef was a very positive person. Also, he saw the positive in everything. It became a part of him. Or else, Yosef HaTzadik would not have been able to survive in Egypt as a slave, sold by his brothers, and still remain a good Jew, a good person following his father's footsteps and becoming one of the greatest people that ever lived. Because he saw the positive in everything. He didn't let anything get him down. So, Yafei Naim, he had a good eye. And he was able to remember. <clears throat> That's why also, we say that, a, that whenever, like the Torah says, that Yosef HaTzadik was against the evil eye. He was against Ain Hara. The evil eye had no power over Yosef HaTzadik. That's what it says, Ben Porat Yosef, Ben Porat Ale Ain. Yosef HaTzadik was, was basically, no, no, the powers of the evil eye had no power over Yosef. So he had the eye, the power of the eye. Vahaya, vahaya lo midat hazechira. And he had a good memory, as it says over there. Vaiskor Yosef. The Pasuk says, Yosef remembered his brothers, but they did not remember him. Because of that Pasuk, his stone has the koach of memory. Of giving you an extended memory. And also because Yosef HaTzadik was such a big chacham. He was no ordinary person. You know, he, he literally single-handedly, obviously with the help of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but single-handedly saved the entire world. Forget about one country. Yosef saved the entire world with his capabilities to come up with new ideas on how to do things. Right? He showed Egypt how to save uh, their... their um, Ration off their food for the seven years of plenty and then later on they're going to, you know, he had these, that's why Paro, right away, you think Paro was a fool? He wouldn't give the entire country in the hands of a Jew, let alone a, a slave. But Paro recognized Chokhmah. He said, this boy is not no normal boy, this kid's got wisdom. If I give him the reins to the country, he'll save everybody. And that's exactly what Yosef HaTzadik did. And because of that, because this is the stone of Yosef, it brings chokhmah as well. And he was able to also interpret dreams. And he also had Ruach HaKodesh. Yosef HaTzadik through dreams could interpret the future. He was able to tell what's going to come in the future. What is that? That's Ruach HaKodesh. That's having Nevoah. He was given Nevoah through dreams. Therefore, the stone also has these powers to give a person the powers to be able to see what might happen in the future. A nitzot, a spark of nevuah. Like it says in the Pasuk, Achare hodia lokim, as Paro said to Yosef, Achare hodia lokim, after which God has let you know or has informed you, et kol zot, all of this, en navon vechacham kamocha. There is no one wiser than you in all of Egypt. And truly, there was none wiser than Yosef in all of Egypt. He was the wisest person. Now, we said also that the stone has the power to give a person wealth, to make a person wealthy. How do we know this? Why? Why is that stone special for Yosef? Because it says... The Pasuk says, Vahaya Yosef ish matzliach. Yosef was a successful person. This is when Yosef was still an Evid. If you remember the story of Yosef in the Torah, every task they would give Yosef, he, it, he would just blossom in it. Whatever it was, they put him in jail, he became the headmaster in prison. Right? He was, he was, he was a slave in Potiphar's home. He became the headmaster of his entire household, right? Which was a very, very big deal. Anything Yosef did, Hashem would make sure he's matzliach, he's successful. The Midas touch, whatever he touched turned into gold. Nothing you could do for him and he wouldn't be successful. Give him any job, done. They gave him Mitzrayim, he, he, he ensured the survival of the entire Possibly the entire human race at the time. He saved millions and millions of lives from hunger. 
So because Yosef had this power that he was matzliach, he had such hatzlacha from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the stone has that kochot also that makes a person successful in life. Hatzlacha and osher and riches. Velachen, therefore, Kedel lirmoz shele'atid lavo in Yeshayahu, when Yeshayahu wants to say that in the later, in the years, in the days to come, when Moshiach comes, Yizku kol Yisrael chol hatachunot she'esh ba'avne ha'shoam, that Bnei Yisrael are going to merit to have all these great things that come from these stones, as it says in Yeshayahu, Uma'le'ah ha'aretz de'a'et Hashem, the land will be filled with knowledge of God. Imagine all of Am Yisrael living in Eretz Yisrael, especially in Yerushalayim. We're going to be Chachamim. We'll have direct knowledge of God. So Yeshayahu is saying, therefore, in the Pasuk, when Yeshayahu is saying, the land is going to be filled with, with the knowledge of Hashem. What does he mean? That it's going to be filled with people that are going to know HaKadosh Baruch Hu and understand God's mind, so to speak. Yehu Yisrael Chachamim Gedulim. The Jews are going to be great, wise people. And they're going to know many secrets. And there's going to be Hatzlacha Rabbah. Much success for Am Yisrael. Uzchira Tova. And they're going to have amazing memory. Why is Zechira Tova good? Why is a good memory something um, 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 important? Because when a person learns something, when you learn Torah, the most important thing that comes after is what? Keeping it. You learn something today, you forgot it tomorrow, right? What's going to be of it? So when, you, when, when, when something that is of, of much importance and Torah learning is for a person to have a good memory. It's a huge gift to have a good memory. So therefore, Hashem says, one of the things that will come at the time of Moshiach is everybody is going to have an amazing memory. What you learn, you will keep. You won't have to repeat it over and over and over to learn it. As soon as you learn it, you will keep it. You will have that information within you. I cannot tell you how many times people have t- come to me and said, you know, I remember you know, on Shabbat you spoke about this da, 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 three, four months ago. I'm like, I did. What did I say? <laughs> and I'm like, you remember you said this? And I'm like, I'm sorry. I, 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 I would say, I say things and sometimes I don't remember them. Right? It truly is a gift to be able to remember everything. Right? And imagine when Moshiach comes, we're going to have such memory. To remember all of the chokhmah that we have learned, we keep it inside. Now, Uman the Amar. Okay, so now I wanted to just share before we go to the other stone. So this was the stone of Yosef HaTzadik, the Shoham. So I wanted to share the Rabbeinu B'chayi. Rabbeinu B'chayi is a commentary on the Torah. And he has, he is, if anyone wants to learn it, um, he actually has a list of all of these stones and he talks about every single one of them and what they're good for and what their powers were. So let's just do the two that we have, which was the... Um, um, Shoham and the uh, and the uh, um, Yosef. Yosef al Shoham ve unikra unikli. Okay, this is Rabbi Nuvachai hundreds of years ago. He says Yosef was on the stone of Shoham, which is called unikli or onyx. Right? It's just missing the s at the end. Right? Uskulat ha'evan hazot datet chen laadam beine kol ra'av. Person that has this. Has a, ha, finds favor in everybody's eyes. People will like you. Yonatan, find the stone. otiot <laughs> Hashem. And it has the same letters as Hashem. Shoham, Hashem are the same letters. And he says, and that corresponds to the Pasuk, Vayhi Hashem et Yosef, Vayhi Ish Matzliach. And Hashem was with Yosef, and he was a successful person. So it brings success. Uchtiv, and it says, chino sar, beit His chen, the, the, head of the head of the prison, just loved Yosef because Yosef had this chen. He had this favor that people would see him, they would just like him. They wanted to give him things. Like, okay, you, 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 you be my boss now. 
You know, quite literally, you know, Yosef at Sadiq would take any position and go to the highest all of a sudden because people loved him. He was a likable person. Such a thing, by the way, exists. You know, it's called khen. A person has this aura to them that people just like, right? Esther Amalka had the same thing. The Gemara says Esther was not necessarily the most beautiful woman. That's not why Ahasuerus chose her. It says that she found favor in the eyes of anyone who saw her. She had chen. People liked her. She was a very likable person. Hashem gave her chen and that's why people listened to her. Ahasuerus, as a maniac as he was, and he was a maniac, but whatever, whatever she wanted, she, uh, you see in the, you see in the uh, 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 Megillah that without even her talking, Ahasuerus would see her face a little not so happy, would say, Esther, please tell me whatever you want until half of the malchut, half of the kingship, I'll give you whatever you want. Just, just, just be happy. You know, what does that? It's chen. She had chen. And this is what this stone says has this power. And he says now, he says anyone that's going to speak to high-ranked officials like kings, presidents, things like that, if you have this stone with you, your words will be heard. Imagine that. I can imagine how many of the Chachamim in the past that had to go in the courts of the czars and the kings and stuff actually carried the stone with them without anybody knowing. And that's how they overturned so many edicts against the Jews by having the stone of Yosef at Tzadik. And Yosef was Ish Matzliach. That is the stone of Yosef. Now, anybody following so far? We're good? Okay. Just to give you a little uh, taste here, the Midrash, we said that the onyx stone helps memory. And that's what's going to come later on. It kind of gives us a little taste of why the walls of Jerusalem should be. He says over here, the Midrash Tanchuma says, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, on this earth, ba'olam hazeh, on earth, because of the Yetzer Hara, when a person learns something, they forget it. It's a part of the Yetzer Hara's job, right? To make us lazy, not to want to learn it again, not to want to listen to that shiur again, right? But when it comes to the world to come, Hashem says, Ani oker Yetzer Hara mikem ishtakachim. I will take away the Yetzer Hara, you shall never forget again. Shenem Arazi says, V'asirot yad lev ha'even mibsarchem v'natati lachem lev basar. I will take the heart of stone from you and I will give you a heart of flesh and blood. Meaning, basically, Hashem is going to take away the Yetzer Haram. We won't forget anymore. Now, Uman Damar, and the other side, we said the other, the other opinion is that the stones of the Jer- Jerusalem wall would be built with the stone of Yashefe, which was the stone of Binyamin. This was the two opinions. And we said, HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, I will build the stones of the wall with both of them. Yashfe and the Shoham stone. The walls of Jerusalem will be built with these two stones. Since according to the other one, the Yashefe stone, which we said was the Jasper stone, Right? The Rav says, the, this Yashav stone, This is important. Basically, the person's enemies cannot hurt them. You cannot be poisoned by the outside world. You cannot be hurt by the outside world. And this stone was given to Benjamin, to Benjamin. Liskorlo to remind him and remind us, the merit of his mother, Rachel Imenu, that gave birth to him alive. We know the story of Rachel Imenu. Rachel Imenu died at childbirth when she was giving birth to Binyamin. Now, this was a very, very, very risky situation. Binyamin could have, chas v'shalom, easily died at childbirth as well. Right? But it says that Rachel Imenu, so to speak, prayed so that Binyamin does not, the baby stays alive. She gave up her life. So this is in the zechut that he was born alive and he survived such a harsh birth. He has the segula of this stone, the Yashafes stone, which has a segula that the enemies 
cannot hurt the person. Meaning people that want to get at that person, poison them, hurt them, whichever way, they cannot. Right? She, she passed away and he, he, he was alive. Be'od, more. I want to give another reason why this stone, Yashefe, was given to Binyamin. Deita Shimoni, because it's brought in the Yalkut Shimoni, in the Midrash, it says, Parashat Zota Baracha, on the Pasuk, that Moshe Rabbeinu blesses Benjamin in Zota Baracha. As it says, Levin Yavin Amar, right? And it says, Uven Ketefav Shachen, between his shoulders it shall rest. That's what the Pasuk says for Binyamin. What are we talking about? What does it mean? What is resting between Benjamin's shoulders? In fact, what it's talking about is the Beit HaMikdash. The Beit HaMikdash was built on the portion of Benjamin in Jerusalem. Right? And the portion of Benjamin is literally like a, kind of like a, like a neck. Because it's a high mountain. And Beit HaMikdash was built on this, pound, on, the, uh, on this mountain, on the portion of Binyamin. Therefore the Pasuk says, Uven ketefav shachen. Hashem shall rest on your shoulders. Right? Meaning the Beit HaMikdash will be built on Benyamin's portion in Yerushalayim. Lefi shekon ha-shevatim hayu b'imchirato shel Yosef. Why was it that Binyamin was the one to get this zechut that the Beit HaMikdash was built on his Portion, because all of the other Shavatim had a hand in selling of Yosef. Binyamin was the only one that did not. Therefore the Shekhinah would only rest on the only Shevet that did not have a hand in this disunity between brothers. It had to be completely clean. Vem yivnu hem, because if the other Shavatim would come and build it, and then the Jews would go to the Beit HaMikdash and pray for mercy from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, they would not be answered. Why? Because every time the Shevatim would go up on a portion of land that had the Shevatim that quarreled, that sold one of their own brothers, and they would ask for Rachamim from HaKadosh Baruch Hashem, please have mercy on us, every time Hashem would remember why would I have mercy on you? You didn't have mercy on your own brother, your own flesh and blood. And you're asking me for mercy? I can't. It's not to say that Hashem would really say this, but it's important for a person when we are praying to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's brought down in many, many places. It is important that we pray to Hashem. We don't, quote unquote, um, those that are listening to the Spotify version of this, I'm making my fingers quotation marks. We don't, quote unquote, remind God of our of our shortcomings. It's not like Hashem doesn't remember, but He does remember, but we shouldn't work extra hard, so to speak, to bring it up to His face. Like for instance, for instance, you say that a shofar made out of a calf's horns, a cow's horns is not kosher. Other shofarat are kosher, not a cow. One of the reasons Chachamim give as to why the shofar made out of a cow's horns is not kosher is because you made the golden calf, now on, uh, on Rosh Hashanah, you're coming to kingship of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You're crowning Hashem. You're using the horns of the, the, uh, of the animal that you worshipped. You don't want to do that. Don't put it in his face. Don't remind God of your shortcomings. Use any other horn. It's not that he doesn't remember, but we shouldn't do anything to remind him either. Right? So to here. We were telling us that why was it that it was important that it was on Binyamin's? Because we didn't want the Shevatim to have their portion, have the Beit HaMikdash on it, so that if we go and pray on the Beit HaMikdash grounds, Hashem is going to say, oh, you're on the Shevet of so-and-so, he sold his own brother. I'm going to have mercy on you? Why would I? But because it was on Binyamin's land, Binyamin had no part in it. And in fact, Binyamin was a pure, pure righteous person. He was one of the people that never died. Binyamin was one of the people in the world that either, okay, according to opinions, either didn't die or he never sinned in his life. And the only reason that Binyamin was taken was because of the original sin of Adam Arishon. He didn't die because of his own sins. He never sinned in his life. Imagine. Binyamin never sinned. How clean can you possibly be? 
Binyamin was that clean. Right? This is why the stone of Binyamin was the Yashafe, the Mashma, because it is what? What, it, what does it mean? Yesh Pe. Yashafe is built, is made up of two words. Yesh Pe. Meaning there is mouth. Now there's two explanations that uh, the Rabban Mechai says, here over here it says something else. Lefisha bin Yamin Davka, because especially bin Yamin, that, was, that had no hand in the selling of Yosef at Tzadik, and he wasn't part of the whole thing, He's the one who has the mouth that can pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Meaning anybody else, it's kind of like chutzpah. Oh, please, please, uh, have mercy. Oh, you're telling me to have mercy? Where was your mercy? Bin Yamin has the face for it. He's got the mouth for it. Why? Because if Bin Yamin asks for mercy, he was also merciful. In fact, Bin Yamin was extra merciful, which we will see. Therefore, now let's encapsulate everything. Therefore, according to one shita, according to one opinion, that the walls of Yerushalayim would be built with Avne, uh, the stone of Yashefe, to let us, to, to, to Lirmoz, to hint to us, Shela Atid Lavo, in the years to come, when Moshiach comes, Bezat Hashem, tonight, Yehiel Lechol Israel Bechinad Yeshpe. All of Am Israel are going to be included in the Yeshpe. We have a mouth. It is going to be a come, come a time of clarity that we can all pray Takadosh Baruch Hu and all of our tefillot will always be answered because we won't have that stain of that Avera anymore when Moshiach finally comes. Then we'll all have a Yeshpe. Now, I promised I'll do the Rabbeinu Bechaye on the Yashafe as well because it's a beautiful piece. Binyamin. The stone of Binyamin was the Yashafe. Behihanikre Yashpim or Yaspim or Jasper. And this stone actually has many, many different colors. Adumash, Chora, Yeruka, red, black, green. And the segula of this stone is La'atzor Adam. One of the segulot is to stop bleeding. Why was this stone given to Binyamin? Because Binyamin had a lot of confusion in his life. At one point in his life, he was all over the place. That's why this stone comes in all different colors. Binyamin had a tumult in his mind. Why? He knew his brothers sold Yosef. What do I do? Do I tell my father? Do I not tell my father? Imagine watching his father mourn for 20 years. More than 20 years he watched his father mourn. And in this entire time, he was no child. He had 10 children himself by the time he met Yosef. He wasn't a baby. And in this entire time, he had this tumult going on. What do I do if I... And he never listened to the Yetzar Hara. He never revealed to his father what his brothers really did. Fast forward. They come to Egypt. Binyamin sees Yosef out of all the brothers. He knows who he's talking to. The other brothers do not recognize Yosef. Binyamin instantly recognizes his blood brother from the same mother. He recognized Yosef. He had a chance to come clean. Did not. He let Yosef do exactly what he wanted to do. Because he said, Yosef has a plan. Something's going on over here. I'm just going to let it go through. I'm going to let him do what he needs to do. And he did. Therefore, Ulkach, <clears throat> therefore, Nitana lo ha'even azot. The stone was given to Binyamin. Venikred Yashafe, and it's called Yashafe because it, it is built up of two words: Yesh pe. There is mouth. Veze yore al maalato shaf al pi shayalo pe vayalo legarat adavar shatak velogila. And it's teaching us that even though Binyamin had a mouth, he did not use it to reveal the secret of his brothers. Just because you can say something, it don't mean you have to say it. 
Binyamin could have spoken all those years. He never said, he never uttered a single word. Now imagine Binyamin also was mourning for many, many years for his brother. Um, and there's a whole different, um, there's a Rashi that, that, that uh, talks about how close Binyamin really was with Yosef. When Yosef meets Binyamin, he asks him how many children he has, and he says he has 10 children. He asks him, what are the names of your children? And Binyamin starts naming all 10 children to Yosef. And he tells, he tells him, why did you name him these names? So Binyamin says, every single name that he named his children were named after his long lost brother. This is where the Midrash says, this is where Yosef could no longer keep himself. He could no longer stand and he had to go in a room, in a separate room and cry. Why? Because Binyamin told him, I named this child so-and-so because my brother was, right? One of them was uh, Rosh, which means head. So it's because my brother was, was, was uh, the head of the household. He was a great person and he's lost now. One of them was Chupim, from the word Chupa. He says because he wanted to be in the chupa of his brother and he never merited to be to see his brother get married and his brother never saw him get married, go under the chupa. So he named another child Chupim and so on and so forth. Binyamin was very, very, very special. And there was a very special connection between Binyamin and Yosef. Therefore, in the, in the days to come and even in the past, the king that was given the task to eradicate Amalek was King Shaul, the first king of Am Israel, who was from the Shevet of Binyamin, not from Judah. Later, all the kings from, came from Yehuda, but the first king that was tasked with the, with the responsibility to eradicate Amalek was from the Shevet of Binyamin, King Shaul, right? Which was also a big, big tzaddik. Why from the Shevet of Binyamin? Because only a Shevet of Binyamin, who was not intertwined in this disunity between the brothers is the only one that could really eradicate our worst enemy. Right? <clears throat> when Moshiach comes, the first Moshiach is Moshiach ben Yosef. First Moshiach ben Yosef has to come. So basically, Binyamin and, and Yosef has a, have a very big responsibility in the world to come. Now, now we're going to go into the walls of the Jerusal Jerusalem, right? Vakadosh Baruch Hu Amar Hashem said, Leve keden ukden. Let the stones of these walls be according to this opinion and according to this opinion. Yashve and the Shoham. I don't know, half and half, or intertwined together. I don't know how it's going to be, right? Sharesh and Em, because both of them are what? Bene Rachel. They are both the children of Rachel Imenu. This is beautiful. Ve Rachel hi hamama'anet leitnachem Al Galut Ben Israel. Rachel Imenu is the Ima Shel Ben Israel. She's 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 what we call what we call in the Ashkenazic world Mama Rachel, right? She's the mom of Am Israel. She's the one who's crying for her children until today for the Moshiach to come and for us to go back home. That as it says in Yirmiyahu Anavi in, in Yirmiyahu it says Rachel Mevakel Baneha. Rachel cries for her children. Malan in Nachem and Baneha. And she refuses to be comforted. She does not let Hashem comfort her for her children. Min um, i um, Stop your voice from your tears. Ve'inayich midim'ah. And wipe your face of your tears. Ki yesh sachar lifulatech no Hashem v'shavu me'eretz oyev. It says, because you will be rewarded for all your tears, Rachel. You will be rewarded. And your children will go back home. Meaning the only zechut that we have that Moshiach will come is what? In the zechut of Rachel Imenu. Interestingly enough, the reason why we have the zechut of Rachel Imenu is also because she also had a mouth and she didn't use it. I'll say it briefly because we're running out of time. Rachel and Leah were two sisters. Yaakov Avinu wanted to marry Rachel Imenu. Rachel Imenu knew, Yaakov Avinu knew, right? But what happened, Lavan, their father, their father, or Yaakov Avinu's father-in-law, tricked Yaakov Avinu, and instead on the wedding night brought Leah. 
Now Yaakov knew, Yaakov Avinu knew that Leah is going to, uh, uh, Lavan is going to trick him or try something at least. He knew that it's going to happen. He's going to try to do the switcheroo because that's why, by the way, in weddings today, the Jewish minhag till today is that there's a veil on the face of the kala, right? The first thing the chatan does is what? He picks up the veil. What is he checking for? Right? It's the minhag from back then, right? That we check to see, uh, is it the same one, right? <laughs> I wanted to make a joke. But it might be, <laughs> ah, it's one of those. I'm so afraid to make these kind of jokes with weddings. But anyway, <laughs> ah, maybe when we're off video. <laughs> so we check. And, and by the way, I heard this from long, long time ago. That's why Sephardim, especially Persians, Moroccans, you know, we have the minhag that we do. What, what do we do? What do, we, what, what do women do at weddings when the kala comes or the khatan comes? What do they do? Right. They go, so I heard long time ago that the minhag of kel also is actually the word le'ah, which is what the women were doing when le'ah came out. They were all going, la, 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 right? That, that it's really le'ah, right? Anyway, so Yaakov Avinu, knowing that um, he might be tricked, he goes in and, and makes some code words with Rachel Imenu and says, we'll have these co codes. And when you come out, I'll ask you these questions, you answer the ah, 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 and I'll know it's you. Right? Rachel Menu later on realizes, yeah, the father's gonna do the switcheroo, he's gonna do it. What's gonna happen? La is gonna go, and she's gonna get embarrassed. He's gonna give her the codes, she'll, she'll, she'll not know what he's talking about, and his, her sister is going to be embarrassed. Now, what were these codes? They were actually halachot of Shabbat. It says that the codes were halachot of Shabbat. He, Talk to her about different things that they should do on Shabbat. Rachel Imenu goes and tells all these things to Le'ah. However, she doesn't tell Le'ah that she's the one who's supposed to really get married. She tells Le'ah that Yaakov really wants to marry her. And she says to her, if you want to get married, you should know these laws. I learned them, you should know them also. So Le'ah, when she got married to Yaakov Avinu, never really knew that she took the place of Rachel Imenu. She had no idea. She thought, to begin with, she was supposed to marry Ra Yaakov. Years pass, and Le'ah Imenu's son finds Dudaim, which was a plant that helped women become pregnant that wanted children. Rachel didn't have children. She wanted children. So she goes to... Um, she goes to Le'a and says, how about you give me this dudaim that your son found so I can have, so she can have children. So Le'a in the Torah, it's very surprising. This is one of our imahot, she's one of the matriarchs. She turns to Rachel Imenu and says, you took my husband from me. Now you want children from me too? It's like anybody that reads the Torah is like, excuse me, who took whose husband? Whoa, you know? You know, the whole Torah talks about how much Yaakov Aminu loved Rachel and she was his first choice and then he was tricked to marrying Le'ah. So how could Le'ah Imenu, our matriarch, have such thing to come and tell Le'ah, to tell Rachel, oh, you took my husband? Yet we see in the Torah, Rachel Imenu, what does she do? She could at that point be like, listen, back up. Let's talk. Okay? There's some things you need to know. She didn't do that. She said, you're right. What do you want to trade? I'll trade. Whatever it is. She kept her mouth. Therefore, now we go back to the Navi, Yirmiyahu. It says, Hashem says to Rachel Imenu, keep your tears. Because in your zikhut, I'm going, to I'm going to save your children. Why? Because everybody else had a downfall at some point. But you... You, flesh and blood, you were able to keep yourself strong when you had every right to fight back and you didn't fight back. You could, have, you could have fought for your honor and you didn't. You were stepped all over. You said nothing. Well, if you're flesh and blood and you're able to withstand all of that, I'm, I'm the creator of the world. Okay, so my children didn't listen to me all these years. If you can take it, I can take it. So Hashem says to Rachel Imenu, in your zikhut, I will save. Just like Binyamin. Binyamin had a mouth also. 
But he didn't say anything. Rachel Imenu had a mouth. She didn't say anything. In these zikhuyot, we're going to have the geula. And these are the ones who are going to be responsible. Okay. Therefore, Okay, so Hashem accepts the tefilot of Rachel Imenu. <coughs> so he says, Vesamti katkot. That's why the Pasuk says, I will put katkot. As we said, katkot means, I'll take some from here, and I'll take some from here. I'll take the both, both opinions, the Shoham stone and the Yashafeh stone. That the stones of Yerushalayim will be built with these two stones. And the Pasuk is kadin ve kadin, some from here and some from there. The the walls will be built with the stones of Shoham and Yashafeh. Which, which correspond to your two children, Yosef and Binyamin. This is, so to speak, Hashem saying to Rachel Imenu, that I will build that third wall corresponding to your two children. Because you're going to be the cause of the redemption of Am Yisrael. Therefore the walls of Jerusalem, once it's rebuilt, will be built with the stones of your two children. And what do those walls mean and what do they represent? A few things. One is that all the Torah that they're going to learn because of these walls and the stones in them, they'll never forget. They'll be matzliach and everything they do, they will be successful. They will be able to learn Torah and they will never forget. And most importantly, there will be no enemies that will ever be able to touch them. Therefore, Hashem is going to build these walls that have these special stones in them to not only protect us, but Bezrat Hashem, give us a life of luxury and goodness and spirituality. Baruch Amen ve Amen.